is pretty cool. A school in Washington State is giving new meaning to the phrase higher education. Early show correspondent Tracy Smith explains in this week's study hall report, which I got to say took a lot of guts to do this, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, you say it's cool because you didn't go up in one of these things. <laughs> a public elementary school in Seattle is giving every fifth grader flight lessons in real planes. But the point is not to train more pilots. It's to teach kids that with hard work and a little courage, the sky really is the limit. It's hard to think of them as pilots when they're too young to drive to the airport by themselves. But every year, the fly boys and fly girls of Greenwood Elementary School take to the skies. Bailey is flying into some of the most crowded airspace in the Northwest, but you'd never guess that this is only her second time in an airplane ever. What goes through your mind when you see your 11-year-old daughter behind the controls of an airplane taking off? Uh, what went through my mind was, oh my God, that's my baby. And then I think about how they drive cars with their video games and things and think, and they're in charge of an airplane? Of course, none of the students are really doing this alone, in the air or on the ground. Learning to fly is something Principal Robert Radford takes personally. As a young man in Mississippi during the 1940s, he dreamed of a life as an Air Force pilot. Why is it so important to you to share your passion for flying with these kids? Part of my passion comes from the fact that I was denied um, um, the ability to fly in the United States Air Force because at the time um, there was abject segregation. We all ready to fly today? Now, for okay, students good. under Dr. Radford's care, all flying is not only allowed, it's essential. All year long, kids learn to navigate, build a model plane from scratch, and fly a simulator. And come June, it's time for the real thing. Everybody flies, even me. So if I go up with you guys, I need to take something for my stomach? Yeah, I need you a barf they, bag. They give you a Bring a barf success. bag. A success. The kids do their own pre-flight checks, with a little help, and then, one at a time, they strap into the pilot's seat. Do you know that song, Up in the Air, Junior Birdman? <laughs> so what's it like to fly with these guys? Let me put it this way. They weren't nervous at all. Actually, the landing wasn't that bad. So how do you feel? Okay. Yeah, you think you could do it without her now, right? <laughs> sure. Few of these kids expect to fly for a living, but even so, they're grateful that their principal gave them the chance to try. I think that we have to owe, owe it pretty much to him for putting this program together and us, letting us fly. Yeah, it's like he put it in our hands. They might become architects, they might become truck drivers, whatever it is, but I think the defining moment for them will be that they can look back at this experience and say, man, that was awesome. So who's paying for all this? Well, not the taxpayers. Families pay about 40 bucks, and the Flying Cub Club Wings Aloft helps out with the rest. All right, so what was it like going up with an 11-year-old at <laughs> the controls? Well, I didn't use the barf bag, but it was really <laughs> scary. I mean, it, they were saying stuff like, well, do your feet touch the pedals? Oh. This is not something you ask other pilots. This does not inspire a lot of confidence, <laughs> but great job. That Thanks. was really fun. That's Tracy Smith. And up next, what you need to know before planning your summer vacation vacation to historic landmarks across the USA. We'll be right back. This study hall segment sponsored by St. Joseph's Aspirin. For aspirin therapy, a single St. Joseph's Aspirin. Trust it with all your heart. My brother